So there was some massive news dropped in regards to Palantir with a huge partnership announced with Oracle. Yes, it's big news, but unfortunately most people will get this wrong and it will destroy your Palantir position if you actually get this wrong. And I want you to avoid being wrong about this news, but unfortunately it's very easy to do. Don't worry, we'll get you through that. And there's actually a hidden, huge, huge positive that I've seen absolutely nobody talk about that we're gonna discuss here as well. So stick around, there's a lot in this video and I wanna make sure you don't screw this up so you can make a lot of money on it. Just make sure you like the video if you like getting the truth without the hype. So I think everybody's heard by now the big news that was announced on Thursday, the partnership there with Oracle. Don't worry, we'll get to that one huge thing that nobody's talking about here in just a second. But right now, for those of you that hadn't heard, let's just give you kind of the condensed version real quick. Oracle and Palantir have struck a partnership to deliver enhanced cloud and artificial intelligence solutions, targeting the needs of both businesses and governmental entities globally. This collaboration will combine Oracle's cloud and AI capabilities with Palantir's AI and data analysis platforms aiming to help organizations use their data more effectively. The company said in a statement, Palantir shares rose 3.5% on the news in the pre-market on Thursday, while Oracle added 0.7%. Under the terms of the partnership, Palantir will transition its foundry workloads to an Oracle cloud infrastructure. Moreover, Palantir's Gotham and AI platforms will be made available across Oracle's extensive cloud infrastructure, including public cloud regions, dedicated regions, and specialized government and defense areas, among others. Obviously, that is Big news, but I hear you guys right now. Luke, how the heck can you screw this up? What are you talking about? Well, it is critical that you understand these two facts about Palantir stock that everybody seems to get wrong, that if you get wrong too, it's going to cost you a lot of money in regards to Palantir. So let's talk about those next. And then we'll get to that massive hidden positive that nobody's talking about here in just a second. Fact number one, Palantir is a slower growth type of company. Now look, when the bears talk about this specifically, who freaking cares? They're saying it's going nowhere. These contracts mean nothing. They, they don't mean anything to the bottom line, whatever the case is. It's you just comical and you kind of laugh at those guys. They clearly don't know what they're talking about there. And these contracts are big. And obviously it's an accumulation of these contracts that makes it even more massive. And of course, future business, the business is very sticky and all that good stuff. But then the bulls are just as wrong when they're out there telling you guys, this is insane growth. This is incredible. This is the most incredible growth story ever. And they make all these crazy projections about the stock price and all those other things like that. And that's not true either. The facts are, this is a slower type of growth company. We're not seeing 50% year over year growth. Really, we never have seen that sort of growth out of Palantir. You're just not getting that kind of growth. Heck, we can't even get up over that 30% mark that management talked about a couple of years ago, and that's okay. I don't need it to do that in order for it to be a great stock for me to own, but it's something that if you get wrong and if you start getting into these crazy projections and some of these crazy growth numbers and everything else without understanding the business itself, how they do business, how the money actually flows into the company and everything else involved with that, you're going to set yourself up for when Palantir goes on a big massive run, you're going to FOMO in and then whenever the stock comes back down to reality, it's going to create a lot of problems and you're going to make mistakes. Facts are, this is a slower growth type of company. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just giving you guys the facts in regards to this stock. Fact number two, Palantir stock price will move slower than most of us want it to. Now the bears are out there telling you that Palantir is way overvalued and that's not true. I do not believe it is way overvalued. I just don't believe that. Based upon my valuation, where I see the company going, where I see future revenues going, what the company is guided to more importantly, all those things don't point towards crazy overvalued like we've seen stocks get obviously back in 2021 during times like that. Now you talk about 2021 Palantir, absolutely way overvalued. I agree there completely. But you know, 2024 Palantir, eh, I'm not really seeing it there. But then on the flip side with some of the price targets that I see and some of the other uh, ranges kind of being given by a lot of other folks out there, that implies that there's gonna be like Nvidia style growth in the stock and that's not necessarily true either. More importantly, that's not what management has guided to at all. So you have to understand that the stock price, especially at these, now when it was beaten down, you know, in the six, $7 range, you could see, hey, wow, it's significantly undervalued. You're gonna see some you know, intense stock price appreciation, but we've already had that run. So you can't expect it to go you know, from seven to 24, 25, and then all of a sudden expect it to go from where it is right now up to 60, $75 in the same time frame. That's just not going to happen. And if it does, it's significantly overvalued at that stage. So to expect that sort of growth out of the stock price 
is just not realistic at all. If anything, if somebody wanted to tell me it's a little bit overvalued, I could probably go with that. I could see that. Now, I don't personally think that, but that's not out of the realm of possibility either. Because remember with valuation, it's kind of more of a range and it's kind of more of a, it's an art more than a science. So, you know, if somebody wants to say, hey, I really think fair value is probably closer to 18 bucks. Okay, I can buy that. I don't necessarily agree, but I could buy that. Same thing if somebody wants to tell me they see it up at 25, 26, $27 is fair value for it right now. Okay, I can kind of make a case for that too. Again, I think one's too low. I think one is too rich, but I, they're at least within the realm of possibility. But that also means, especially given the growth rates, that we're not going to see a lot more share price appreciation over the next few quarters here as it moves forward, unless we get some sort of blow it out of the water, incredible NVIDIA style earnings. If we do get that, of course, but if we don't get those kinds of earnings that can justify a higher valuation, it's going to move slower than a lot of folks think it should grow. And that right there can obviously induce large mistakes in your investing, which is super important when we discuss the actual big news with this announcement here in just a second. But if you don't get these two facts that we just discussed twisted and you just follow your plan and hit your DCAs on your mark, you're going to be just fine. Or if you buy when it's undervalued based upon your valuation with the stock and kind of execute your modified DCA or whatever your strategy is, you're going to be okay. And if you don't have a valuation for Palantir, you need to get one. And if you need help with that, I can help you out personally there if you take advantage of the sale that ends tomorrow for my group. The March Madness sale is ending tomorrow where you get direct access to me. You can see my complete watch list with price targets. See when I buy a series of Palantir. You get free coaching. You can take five courses for free. You can be a part of the best six, seven, and eight figure discord out there. We do live Q and A's. We got weekly videos that come out. All kinds of other things out there, guys, and so much more coming to the group. Make sure you take advantage of the sale before it ends tomorrow and the price goes back up. To me, the one thing that I really see with this that's kind of, it's just not being talked about there, and maybe there's a good reason for it, but when I look at the partnership with Oracle, I think, wow, some big, large tech companies are finally coming around to Palantir. Now, I understand the government's large and a lot of other companies that they partnered with are very, very large partners. I agree there completely, but this is something to where it's in their world, something to where you figure, hey, you know, if they were to partner up with Microsoft, obviously that'd be game changing, but Microsoft's just going to develop its own AI. And so Oracle basically saying, hey, we're not going to go at it on our own. We're not going to try to buy somebody else and bring them in in order to do this. We're going to have Palantir do it speaks volumes to that. And especially if that partnership is highly successful for Oracle, obviously we think it'll be successful for Palantir, but if it's successful for Oracle, that might very well have a lot of these companies that are kind of behind in the AI race and kind of haven't caught up to everybody else yet, maybe looking at Palantir as the way to solve their AI problem instead of trying to do it in-house or trying to acquire a small player or maybe trying to partner up with somebody like a Microsoft, but instead looking to Palantir as the one that has the best solution to maybe take a legacy business. And there's a lot of massive, massive tech companies out there that are now legacy. They weren't legacy 20 years ago, but they haven't innovated like the rest of tech has. So now they are legacy. Maybe this is the way they save a lot of those companies and bring them into that next era is by partnering up with Palantir. Now again, that's not something that's gonna put massive dollars to the bottom line next quarter and oh, my new price target's hundred bucks or anything stupid like that. Nothing like that at all is what's going to happen but it does set the stage for huge partnerships in the future. And again, those continued large contracts coming through that obviously benefit us as Palantir shareholders over the long run. So I'm very, very excited about the opportunity there. And remember, if you wanna see all my buys on the stocks that I do wanna buy in real time, and you wanna see my complete watch list, complete with price targets, you wanna take five courses for free, you wanna get a hold of that free coaching and be a part of that, you wanna have direct access to me anytime you want, you wanna use our stock analyzer tool, you want to be a part of the best six, seven, and eight figure discord of all kinds of members helping you out and helping you become a better investor. Make sure you take advantage of the sale. Make sure you get your membership before that price goes up and click this video here. If you want to see exactly what I'm buying in this market and click here to see my exact plan for this market. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.